Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I've got not only my first handbag review for you, but it's actually on my very first designer handbag ever. This one is especially special to me because it was bought by my then boyfriend, now fiance, and it's really what started off, well, not really. My love for designer handbags started just before that, and then when he bought me this one, I cried. Because it is so sentimental to me, this one might be a little bit of a biased opinion, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway in case you are interested in buying either Valentino or this purse specifically, but let's get right into it. I'm going to break this video into a few different parts, so I want to start off with functionality and what fits inside the bag. Next we'll go into wear and tear, then trendiness, price, and finally whether or not I recommend it. So because this isn't an unboxing, I'm just going to show the bag to you and it's this one right here. If I can get the name first time, I'm going to be so impressed. So this is the Valentino Rock Stud crossbody bag in the size small in grainy calfskin in the color light ivory with gold hardware. They make these names so complicated, but it really does explain everything there is to know about it. Just for reference with any mod shots that I'm going to be adding in, I am 5'7 for reference on my body type. So as far as functionality goes, I think that this bag is great because obviously as it says in the name, it is a crossbody bag, but my actual favorite style of handbag is a top handle. So what I do to adjust this is just wrap the crossbody strap around this front flap. So I just sort of double it up here and then you've got yourself a top handle bag. If you wanted to change this into a clutch as well, you could just completely take off this crossbody strap. So you've got like multiple ways of wearing it, which I think is great. The crossbody strap does have an adjustable buckle to it, so you can change the length of it up to about six inches or so. I typically just leave it on the setting that it came on but as far as versatility I think this bag has a lot of different ways to wear it so for functionality in terms of how you can wear the bag I definitely give it a 10. Inside as you can see in this cutaway it does just have one slip pocket at the back of the bag on the inside of it and other than that it's just one deep pocket so you can fill it with whatever you want. For some bags that have a lot of divisions within them I think that can actually make them a little bit harder to use so I prefer a bag this size to be set up like this one. If there was something that I would change about it, I'd probably add in a zipper compartment as well, but I'm good with just the slip pocket. Whenever I need to use anything and pop it in the back, I can just slip in my cards if I need to just run out quick. But as far as the inside goes, to me, it's set up really well. Also for functionality, especially on a bag this size, I love to see that there are feet. Feet make me so happy because it's just one more layer of protection between your bag and whatever surface it's sitting on. So to me, this is a really great plus, especially when the bottom of the bag is leather as well. With canvas bags, you might be a little bit less concerned, but especially when the bottom is leather and a light color leather at that, I think that the feet are just something that shows the detail that balance put into it and really thought it all through and it's just something that I really appreciate as the one using the bag. As far as what fits inside, typically what I take is my notepad. I basically take this with me everywhere. It's just a really small purse size one so it fits in anywhere and it's really light which is something that I appreciate because I don't want to be carrying around a bag that's sticking into my shoulder. I also carry this little pouch which I love. It's a vintage, let me see the name, I think it's Ingberg. I love that it's furry. I just think that it's so cute instead of carrying around like a full size wallet. Sometimes I just put cards or some change in this if I'm running out and especially if I don't want to put in a full size wallet into this bag, I'll just take this and then fill it up with whatever I need for the day. Obviously my phone, I forget which one this one is, but any size phone is going to fit in here. And then just a lipstick. So I try to go as light as I can whenever I'm taking this bag and note that nothing in here is of a dark color except for my phone because obviously I don't want any color transfer. That actually leads me into my next Next point, which is wear and tear on the bag. I've had this one since 2018. 
Yes, I've had this one since the end of 2018 and I've worn it quite a bit. It took me a while to actually start wearing it. I'm the type of person whenever I get something new in my wardrobe, I want to just kind of look at it there and admire it before I start using it. I don't know if anybody can relate to that, but that's just how I do things. So once I started wearing this bag is when I just kept wearing it and I tend to wear it quite a bit in any season. To me, light colored handbags are things that you can wear all year round and I know there might be a lot of people that disagree with me thinking that light handbags are more just for spring and summer weather if you know me at all I love white white's just sort of my thing and especially this handbag in winter time is something that I love to use so I'm not afraid of using it during any season based on how many times I've worn it I think it's actually held up so well if I can show you if you can see any scratches on the front gold plate I'm gonna be really surprised because because honestly there's hardly any it flips up with this toggle and you might be able to see a few little sort of scuff marks here if if honestly if any there's really nothing you can see a little bit of wear on this plate underneath but that's sort of expected and it's not something that really bothers me if there is a little bit of scratching that goes on but as far as the finish there's hardly been any wear so far which I think is great the only places where there have been a few nicks in the leather are let me see if I can find them one here if you can see it and another at the back right here again it's gonna be so hard to see because the, the leather has worn so so well on the inside there's a little bit of marking here and here which is where the rock studs have dug in a little bit when the bag is closed so because this is adjustable and it's not fastened to the bag because it's removable sometimes the rock studs can turn which makes a little bit of an indentation and a little bit of a mark on this side of the bag but as far as wear and tear it is really minimal I'm not normally the type to really baby a bag but this one is one that I do take a little bit extra care of just because it's white and because it has so much sentimental value to me it's not one that I just throw around if I am taking it traveling I always put it in a dust bag first if I'm not carrying it on my body so for wear and tear I just I can't recommend this enough because if you are the type that's going to use Use your white or light colored handbags you know that color transfer is an option but again a lot of my wardrobe is white or light colored so when I do tend to wear this bag I would never wear it with like newly bought jeans but when I do wear it I tend to wear it with lighter colored items which I just think is a good rule of thumb if you are going to be buying and using light colored handbags anyway oftentimes with color transfer as well you can get away with just using either a damp white microfiber cloth that has just a little bit of warm water on it and gently rubbing the outside of it and whatever marks there might be will likely come off very very easily so try that first before going for something like scotch guarding your bags or any other sort of spray that you can use in order to repel any sort of color transfer okay next is price and just to get it all out there this bag is completely leather like fully front back inside everything and I think that that plays a really big part in it because if you're gonna look for a bag this size completely fully leather from a place like Chanel or Dior you're gonna be paying a premium for those names Valentino is definitely still luxury designer but for this handbag I'll pop the dimensions on screen so you can get a full picture it's 1650 and it's still available today as I mentioned this one I received three years ago and the price has still not changed that's something that I really appreciate from Valentino they don't do huge price increases so we've seen like from Chanel and Louis Vuitton recently they've done in insane price increases. So Valentino's prices have gone up, but it's not that they're changing the prices of items that they've already released. And this bag is still available today on their website, same price as three years ago. That's just something I really appreciate about the fashion house. They're not trying to sort of gouge anyone by increasing their prices, but this is definitely a classic and a staple of the fashion house because it's been re-released year after year. Okay, trendiness. If you know the Valentino rock studs, as soon as you hear those words you're probably thinking more shoes instead of purses but if you are going to be thinking about the purse version of this line you're probably thinking of the 
what's it called? The spike bag. The spike bag is the one that has the rock studs all over it. It also has the top handle and the chain crossbody strap. This one, as you would have seen, is a leather crossbody strap with the rock studs. And I might seem biased, but I do prefer this one. I think that the rock stud bag, it's been considered like a classic and a handbag collector's collection, but I think that it is pretty trendy. It's not one that I think is gonna have a ton of longevity. We've seen it sort of transformed in the new Roman stud bag, the one that Valentino just released. I think the most popular size of it so far is quite large and I think that it's beautiful, especially the knitted version of that. I'll have that on screen. But this bag is just one that is so much more classic, I think, than the spike bag. I'm not saying that that bag isn't beautiful, but I definitely prefer this one. It's also more unique. You don't see this one on the street as much. If you are looking for something that not everybody has, this is one that I definitely recommend. So my last category is whether or not I recommend it or not, and it's absolutely going to be a yes. I think this bag is great. I love the size. I love the versatility. I love the color. It comes in quite a few different colors, and Valentino is known for their like dusty rose color. It's beautiful. Not super my style, but I love this one, and I think that if you are looking for a fully leather handbag, Valentino is a really great house to purchase from because you'll be getting a lot of bang for your buck. Okay guys, that's everything for today. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know any handbags that you might want me to review. Whether or not I have them in my collection, I will definitely have an opinion on them. So feel free to let me know anything that you might want to see coming up. Please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more of me coming up very soon and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!